Hello everyone. This video is intended for students in the CMSC 201 class for fall 2021, working on the Lost and Found project. I'd like to give you a bit more information about how the project uh, gets started, so you all have a bit of a hint as to how to attack to use the grid. I'll show you how I get the files from the GL server and where I go from there. So without further ado, let's begin. What I've done so far is pulled up uh, the project itself and we see all the files here and what i've also done is i have created basically an empty project i've really just stripped out an old project um and i've navigated to if you can read this it's afs umbc.edu users er eric a pub cs201 fall 2021 so that's, and then over here, I've navigated to the uh, directory where my project is. Uh, as you see, it's empty, but that's okay. Uh, now what I'm gonna do, click on project two, I'm just gonna take everything here, drag drop, done. So that's all I really need to do uh, here. I'm using Bitvise, by the way. So if you aren't using Bitvise, you can also do this with uh, WinSCP or with any other program on Mac, I guess Cyberduck is one of the, is a program that'll work. So uh, the other thing to say is do not um, copy these files, uh, copy paste them, uh, because the files are a little bit structured on the inside. And if you copy paste them, it'll fail, um, most likely. So all right, so this is really all I need to do for this. Now, on the GL server, if I were going to do this, I would need to, uh, well, let's just do it on the GL server. I wasn't really planning on doing it, but no reason not to. So here we are. Let's see where I am. We're in here. This is my home directory, which is kind of taken up with a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go into CMC201. See, here's all the stuff. Um, I'm going to go into Fall 21. Uh, CP project two. Um, okay. Well, uh, I already have some stuff in here, but instead of uh, trying to attack that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this file, for instance, and then I'm going to do CP. I'll paste the file and dot, and then you see here file's been copied. Here it is. So then I'll repeat this process. Copy. CP. Right click for paste. And a dot. And I'm going to do the second thing, uh, the same thing for the uh, second map. And uh, there's actually a third map in there. Um, and if you see, all this stuff is here. And then I'm going to copy paste this. Uh, not CD. CP. That. There's this, there's that. And then finally, we can take the map maker. The other way to do it would just be to type in, take this out, dot py, hopefully that's correct. And we have everything. So that's all for now that I want to show you on the GL server. I just wanted to show you that you can actually take the uh, files and copy them. And this is how to do it. So all of these paths that you see here, you need to put a CP before and a dot afterwards once you're in the right directory. But actually, I'm going to do everything in PyCharm, so I'm not actually going to be using it. Um, let me fix something better, right? Um, so, okay, let us go on to the um, PyCharm where I will show you how to do all this stuff. So you notice here, um, I basically emptied this old project out. I had like two files in here from a previous semester. So I deleted those. And now all we have is the files that are required for the project. And that's good because that's all we should really need. Um, if you need to rename the file, so let's say we want to rename it, you can right click here, go to refactor, rename. And then I would just take off the start. There we go. So that's perfect. We open this up. We see that there's a bunch of constants up top, and I've imported JSON. So the thing about JSON is it's um, 
basically, it's a way that I can encode, uh, that I can encode things easily to save the files. That's really what it is. It, I think it stands for the JavaScript uh, object uh, notation or something. Um, but, uh, but we're using it past its applications in JavaScript. It's really it's useful because it's a it's a good way to save things to a file or even to a data stream and get them to be sent across the internet or a file something like that. So um, the, the good news is you don't have to know anything about this, right? Uh, well, I, I should say you don't have to know anything about JSON, and you shouldn't try too hard to learn because all of this, not right now at least, right? So for this project, you shouldn't do it. The reason is because if you notice, I give you this one function called load map. <clears throat> and what load map does is loads a map. Surprise, right? So it takes, um, it takes a uh, map file name. And then what it does is it opens that with our like with command, right? Uh, with keyword and with open uh, map file name as map file. And then it, you notice here, it just reads the entire file as a single string. And then it does this json.loads. This is the only real time in your program where JSON gets called. And um, you don't really have to know anything about what this exactly does. Because what it's going to do is then it's just going to return the map that it read out of the JSON file to you. So you don't really uh, have to do any special uh, processing to the file. That's the nice thing about it. And that's why I use JSON. Um, but I also did not want you to have to worry about understanding, like, do I need load S, do I need load, what, a, you know, how does the encoding work, all of those complicated questions. Um, you notice that none of those questions are really answered here, and they won't be. So, okay, so then I give you the starter code here. It's not a lot. It just says map file name, what do you want to load, right? And then it says the game map is equal to load map, map file name. And then it just says if the game map. So if it loaded, right? Uh, if it didn't load or if there was an error, so uh, for instance, if we run this program and then what we do is we say asdf.asdf, um, we're gonna get a file not found error, right? Um, the answer is don't do anything about that, right? So you, you don't have to fix that. Uh, assume that is not a problem with your project, right? That's simply a problem with uh, the fact that the file didn't exist. So let's load a file that does exist, right? First map, dot map. And process finished with exit code zero. So it's happy. It loaded the map. It did everything we wanted. Uh, it passed, right? And that's it. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say, I'm going to call game, uh, what, what do we want to call it? Lost and found, right? I'm going to call it on the game path. Now, of course, what this means is that we're going to need, and you don't have to name your function lost and found, right? Um, you can name it whatever you like. You can call it play game, uh, you can call it essentially whatever, right? Uh, here, I'm going to call it uh, the map. Or maybe I'll call it the grid, just to be. There we go. That's good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the grid. And we're going to see what kind of mess pops out when we do this. So uh, first map. So what we see here is really just a bunch of absolute gibberish, right? And it's really hard to figure out what's going on. Um... But I do promise you, so I promise that this is really just a 2D grid with a with dictionaries inside. So it's not just a 2D grid, but it's with, you know, with. So that's the little caveat, but whatever. So if we have a 2D grid, we can sort of help ourselves by printing out, uh, we can say for uh, the row in the grid, right? print the row, and we'll see what comes out now. And so instead of printing the grid, we'll just print out each row, let's say first map, dot map. And so now you see it's a little bit better, right? Each one of these rows in the grid is a list, 
right? And so how many uh, rows are there? So there's one, two, three, four, five. And how many columns are there? One, two, three, four, five. So this is a five by five 2D list in Python, right? And each entry in that list, um, and you see here that the that there's no items and there's no requirements, there's nothing. The only things that exist are underscores, right? Which stand for floors, um, asterisks, which are walls, um, more underscores. Here's an here's a D, which stands for door. And here I'm gonna tell you that um, maybe we should change these constants to lowercase just for this. Uh, we should also uh, probably make it so that our program is case insensitive, just to that, just to say that. Um, then X is for exit. So here we have the exit, right? Um, and we have a bunch of walls. We have a bunch of this stuff. We have a secret and we have a door, right? Um, and so what we can do here is we can actually print out or say, uh, what should we say? Uh, let's say grid, uh, grid square in the row. We're going to print out. Um, what are we going to print out? So here's the thing. We're going to print out the grid square. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll set the end equal to maybe a tab. Let's do that. And then we'll here we'll print a new line, right? So let's do this and print out first map dot map again. And now you see that all those uh, those brackets that were around here have disappeared. All we have are the dictionaries. But really, when we're displaying this map, we don't want to display the map with the items and with the symbol. This dictionary we don't want to display it this way. Um, what we really want to do is we want to display it just with the symbol. So what you get, what you can do is you can say symbol like this, and I'm going to replace this with a single space. Uh, just if, if I, ha if I left this as a tab, you'd see what happens, right? So, uh, if we left this as a tab, we would get something that looks like this, which is not as bad as I anticipated. It's okay. Um... I anticipated the tabs being a little bit wider, so... Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to replace it with a space. And so now you're going to see this. Let's load second map. Right? Okay. Now let's load simple map. Nice. And you notice that the door and the secret are both visible. Uh, secret... Uh, no, not secret map. Uh, first map. Let's do this again. And now you see that there's just one space between them, and uh, all of that is the way it is, right? The secret is right here. Just for testing purposes, here's the exit. Um, here's a little inex This is an inaccessible area, right? If your player starts at zero zero, uh, then this is inaccessible, right? We can't we can't get here because, uh, well, there's walls all around, them. Uh, walls all around it. I think that's pretty clear. Um, Okay, so this is one way to draw the grid, right? And so here's the other way to draw the grid, right? Maybe you want to draw the grid in a different way. So these are using uh, for each loops. And of course, this is not actually how you have to draw the you know, uh, grid for the project. And the reason why is that, remember, the secrets must appear as walls uh, until they are revealed, right? And so you never actually see an S. Right? You should never see S in your, in your grid because they're currently secret. And when they're no longer secret, they become doors. So you see a D. So basically what you, sh what you should see uh, when you're playing this game, if you're the player, is you have an asterisk that becomes a D. But really, uh, it was a secret that became a D. But you're just going to have to decide, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of extra coding here to fix that so that it works correctly, right? Um, so for instance here, if you want to use for I loops, uh, which I think is actually a good way to do it, you'll have to do for I in range len the grid, and then for J in range len the grid at I. And
And so the reason why you want to do this is that this deals with the bros, right? Whenever you do range len the grid, uh, this is equal to uh, row indices. And the reason is because the row indices are the first index in a 2D list. So when you have a, a list that's called L and you have X or A and B, let's do uh, that, then row, the, the row index is equal to A, or really A is equal to the row index, or however you like to have your equal signs. Okay, and the second thing to say is that when you have the range len, the grid, uh, this is equal to column indices, which are the second index. So again, if you have L of A, B, B is equal to the column index. There we go. So, <clears throat> let's proceed and draw out this again. So we're going to draw the grid twice. So actually, let us put in a print statement with a whole bunch of the next lines. And the reason why I'm doing this is just, uh, this has nothing to do with your project, right? Ignore thing, nothing to do with your project, just to make sure uh, that it's obvious where one map ends and the next one begins. I ran out of room, so I won't even say that. So I'm going to say print um, the grid i, j, simple, right? With end equal to... Well, so what happens if I don't change the end? Let's see what happens. So let's do, well, let's do simple math first. So you see what happens if I don't change the end? Everything just gets an end line, right? So we don't want that. So we're going to change the end, say, to a single space. But then we get another problem. Remember, if we change it like this, what we're going to end up with is simple math. Or for instance, if we do it this way, notice here it's all in one line. There's no end lines. First map dot map. Notice here there are no end lines. So outside of this inner loop, so this is the inner loop that's paint painting each one of the columns. When we get to the end of a column, we need to print a blank. Now printing a blank is basically the same thing as printing. Remember, in this case, we haven't changed the end symbol, so end is equal to new line. So that's why it's actually going to print nothing with a new line after which is what we want, right? We want to print nothing else because we're finished with that line, but we want to go on to the next line. So that's how we do this. So the real trick in this uh, project, right, is that, uh, for instance, here, the the grid at IJ um, with a symbol is how you have to access the symbol at any IJ position. And remember, you can you can change these to for instance, uh, let's actually just do a refactor here. So let's refactor, rename. <clears throat> let's rename this into row index. And then let's rename this into call index. Just to make it a little bit more descriptive of what we're doing. And so you can add, where is refactor? Refactor is here. Re rename. I just want it to make sense. And I want it to be what we're actually doing. So you might think it's a little bit of code bloat in the sense that, uh, or at least uh, character bloat. There's a lot more characters than there were, but the the character it's all the same, right? This is just I. This is just J. Okay. So what's next? I think what's next is basically to look at the structure of a, any given dictionary and just to figure out a little bit about it, right? So I know that on this. Uh, on the first map, there's nothing, but I think in the second map, uh, there are items, right? And the good thing about this is you notice that the output for both of these are the same. So this is the for each version of painting. This is the for I version of painting. They're going to be both the same. So um, there's actually some items hidden in here, right? There's some items hidden in here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if the grid at the row index, call index, items, then we are going to print out, or actually we should uh, maybe not print them out because we will print, uh, we, what we'll do instead of printing it is we will change uh, the symbol to items, I think. So we'll just print out think items. 
points. And so what you'll see now is if we do this, that suddenly the items will become visible, at least in the second map. So let's load second map map again. And you see now that the items are visible. Now let's open up the second map file. Not that we really should be doing this, but let's open it up and just see what's inside. So what we see here is a bunch of stuff. This is all for the first row, right? The only thing in the first row that's not just a, a floor with no items is this wall here, which is right here. Uh, so let's go to the second one. So here I put in the indentation so that it would actually kind of uh, be nicely formatted so you could kind of read it. I don't suggest you really read through this too much, but now you see that this is the first row. This is the first column. So this is the dictionary that we're going to get for the first row, first column. And you notice here it says items, and it's not an empty list. It has the blue key in it. So basically, that's why at position 1-1, one, one, there is an items list. That items list is just one thing. It has the blue key in it. So what if you wanted to print out? So um, let's, so I, I, you know what we'll do? We'll say all items equals empty list, right? So if there's some items here, what we're going to do is we're going to say all items dot um, I guess we can actually use extend. Um, so what extend does is it appends all of the items from one list into another list. So if you don't want to use extend, uh, what we can do is we can just say for item in and we steal the grid. I'm not going to copy paste. I'm actually going to write it out. Row index call index uh, items. And then what we'll do is instead of extending, we'll just append uh, the item like this. And so now what we're going to see is at the end, what we'll do is we will print out uh, I think it's all items. So what we'll do is we'll just print out all the items at the end. So second map should just print the blue key. Right? And it does. Not very interesting. Not very interesting. I think I put a little bit more into the third map, so let's look at the third map. Ooh, that third map is big. Right? Third map is big. There's some secrets. I kind of made a little secret here so that you could theoretically go around this way, come right down to the exit. I forget if the secret requires anything. Uh, you'd have to find out. And there's some items here inside of this door. Um, you know, standard stuff. You know, you have to go around and find the items. You unlock doors, that sort of thing. So there's a red coin, a blue coin, and a green coin. Those are the three different items that are on this. So you see here, one of them here. I, we don't know which ones they are. Uh, if we looked at the JSON, we could find out. But, yep, there's a red coin, blue coin, and green coin. That's where uh, you'll find all the items. Okay? So... Um, I think in the third map is an example of where the start is, maybe? Let's see if start is in here. Yep. So, so, in general, if you can't find any start in the dictionary, uh, then just start at zero, zero. Okay? So in this map, for instance, you would start at this position here uh, for the simple map. So let me just draw the simple map again, right? You always just start at zero, zero. I think that's basically a pretty safe assumption. Here, you'll actually pick up uh, the golden key here, because there's a golden key at the zero position. Um, if your character doesn't pick it up after the first turn, it should at least try to pick it up after the second turn. So wherever you are, you should check to make sure that that space doesn't have any items that you haven't picked up. But, yeah. Um, this is a little bit of an exception. Normally I'm not going to put items right under your player's like, spawn position. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty good for that. And now I just want to show you, I think the last thing that I want to show you. So I've shown you this. 
um, how you can output some stuff, uh, how you can make sense of the grid, how you can print out um, the grid at the row, column, and the symbol, right? Because that's the thing that you actually have to print out for the map. Finally, I want to show you how to use the map maker because the map maker is just a piece of test code. It's a, it's a piece of code that we're giving to you in case you want to make new maps. And so you might think to yourself, man, it's a little bit hard to use. And the answer is, yes, it is a little bit hard to use. So uh, let's make the map 7 and 13 long, and let's call it um, test, map dot map, uh, test map. So don't call it test map dot map because um, I'll actually add the extensions for you. My code does that for you. So just call it test map, hit enter. Now, it says, what does it say to do? Go and modify the file with the walls, doors, secrets, blah, 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 blah. So it says, go and modify the file. Now, what file does it say to modify? Especially in PyCharm here, it doesn't seem like there's anything there. Well, here's the trick. You can kind of do this a little bit. Maybe sometimes it'll work. Or uh, you can even reload from disk. So when you reload from disk, you'll see, ah, there's a new thing called testmap.premap. So let's see what's in here. Not anything terribly interesting. It's just a bunch of floors. So now what we can do here is, oops, we can modify it uh, and make, I need to hold down shift. I'm not being as careful as I should. Let's put a door in there, right? Let's make uh, a room like this that's kind of like a plus sign maybe. And then put a maybe a secret door here. And then maybe put uh, where should we put the exit? Let's put the exit. There we go. So the exit's all the way down here. And um, that's it. So now you hit enter. So let's say that this is what we want to be our map. So we're happy with this map now. Notice that you just, so you might say, but how do I know, how do I establish all the requirements for the secrets? How do I make sure that the doors have the right requirements? How do I put items in? All of that stuff, right? Well, never fear, right? Now, once you're happy with the map, you hit enter. And now it's gonna show you the map that you've made hopefully with some indices that kind of line up correctly. I've tried to make it line up correctly. And so now what you get to do, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Actually, let me see if I can make the font a little bit bigger. Font of the console. Let's make that larger. So if the font, so we've done that. So now what we're going to do is let's put some items in. Let's say that we're going to put some items in at four two, right? Position four two. We're going to put a uh, add item, and it's going to be a skeleton key. And then let's add requirement, right? Uh, select position, sorry, oops, almost did something bad. So, um, at position 5, 12, we want to add a requirement. And we're going to add the requirement. And then here what we're going to do is maybe we'll say, um, let's select position, so say uh, 5, 9, and we'll add an item. Sorry, you do want the, uh, you do want the, I think you do at least. Let's check my code. Let's check my app maker code. Yes, you do. You want the little hyphen. Good. I wasn't wrong. Okay. I didn't want to make too many mistakes here. Uh, so let's add an item. Let's call it the, uh, blue obelisk in honor of my little blue obelisk that I 3D printed. It even has like little hieroglyphic type symbols on it. It's kind of a cool little obelisk. 
Um, and then we'll add a requirement, right? So let's say in order to get into the door, oh no, we need to select the position. I always, I seem to be doing that a lot, 210. Uh, so now we're going to add a requirement. Um, blue, right, the blue obelisk. And so say this is all I really want to do. Well, actually, let's, let's make a green obelisk, right? So let's say uh, at position uh, six zero, we're going to add item green obelisk. And then we're going to add another requirement of, for that door. So a uh, two comma 10 add requirement. And what we're going to add is now, uh, whoops, did that actually do anything? Uh, two 10 add requirement. I should make this a little more user friendly, but I, given that I am really using this as my own test, uh, generator, it's okay if it's not user friendly. Okay, so now this door actually has two requirements, right? So, so now if I run this, um, then we'll see not only that there are, let me use search requirement, right? In, in this, and it should, oh, it's, it's required in the dictionary. See, so now we have requires, uh, blue obelisk, my little mistake here with the empty string, and green obelisk. So you can actually go in and fix that. So let's actually go into that map file and fix that. So you see here that the process finished. You don't actually have to read this. This is just some debug output that I put in to make sure that the thing actually generated. So now we have another test map, right? And so what we can do here is we can actually look for a green obelisk. Ah, cool. The first thing it found was this empty string business. So let's just take that out. And now let's run this through our test program. So let's run this through our program, right? Not our map maker anymore. Let's go back to the original lost and found program. So what map file do you want to load? Let's move load the test map. And you see that it loaded the map that we made and it showed me all the items because that's how I made it do. It didn't hide the secret again because this is not the final version of your program, right? You still have to hide the secrets. And that's a little bit of extra code. That's good. Um, and uh, the other thing is that it tells us what the uh, what the items are. Skeleton key, blue obelisk, green obelisk. So it tells us all of the things that we need to know about this map to get started, right? So <clears throat> I think at this point, you should be able to essentially uh, handle making any of these types of maps you should be able to handle uh printing out the grid and you should be able to kind of get into the project i, I know that um for a lot of you this is going to be a very difficult kind of notation to get used to so just remember in general right there's a row and there's a column and then inside of that is a dictionary uh, which is going to have a bunch of different things one of those things can be a uh, symbol right the other thing can be item, and that's just a string. The other one can be items, and that's going to be a list of strings. Um, the other one is going to be uh, required, right? Which is a list of strings. And then there actually could be a start, which can be true or false. So I guess I should say cool. Um, and what else? That is basically it, right? Thing, and so for just when you get started on the project, I would say focus on the symbol, right? That's what you really want out of the grid at first. And then focus on movement. Try to put your player down and check to make sure you're not hitting a wall, check to make sure you're not hitting a door that you haven't opened, that kind of thing, right? So. You know, try to get your character to move around on the grid, try to get them to not move off the grid, right? So you'll have to do a bunch of uh, safety checking with, with bounds to make sure that the, the new position never gets less than zero and the new position doesn't get less than the length of the grid and the X position isn't net less than zero and the X position doesn't get bigger than the length of the columns, which is slightly different, right? So the length of the columns is this thing, right? 
the length of the rows is this thick, so you'll have to use those two as different range checkers. And once you do that, then you should be on the board. Once you're trapped on the board, you should be good to go. You should basically be able to move around. Um, then I would say maybe even collect items, right? Collecting items should not be too hard. Uh, if you, once you can move, once you land on some items, maybe, I don't know, think about how you might want to represent that. Think about how you might want to code that. How can you remember all the items that you landed on? That kind of thing. Um, and then the next step would be figure out how to open and close. Well, never actually close, so figure out how to open doors. Um, remember, uh, when a door is open, it becomes a floor. So, hint, hint, right? And then um, with secrets, secrets should look like walls, right? So this should be an asterisk, actually. It's not because, as I say, it's not finished, but when you're finished, it will be an asterisk. Then you can change it not to an S, but to a D, right? Change it to a D for a door, right? So that people know, ah, I found a secret. And um, yeah, and then, you know, how do you quit the game? You get your way to the exit, which is X. Um, you are also allowed, if you want, with your user input loop, to have some kind of uh, Q symbol if you want. So if you want to have some kind of, like a symbol that's not WASD for move or E for use, if you want a Q symbol just to quit out of the loop um, in, instead of having to like kill the program, if, uh, if you're running a lot of tests, that's completely legal. We're not going to penalize you. I think I put one in uh, myself just for testing purposes. So... I, I encourage that kind of thing. Okay, I think that's all I really have on this project. I wish you good luck, and, uh, you know, hopefully this will make some kind of sense to you. Um, so, I guess the last thing to say is, what do you do with all these pre-maps that you made? The answer is one of two things. You can either just delete them, right? Or you can save them and make new maps out of them, right? Because... What you can do with the map maker, if you run the map maker like this, um, instead of giving it rows and columns, if you just say, it'll skip over that and it'll just skip to what file do you want to modify. And you can actually say uh, the test map file and it'll load the uh, test map dot pre map. And then you can hit enter. And unfortunately, you do need to tell it how many columns there are. So I think there were 13 columns. Um, I could read the file and check for you, but do it yourself. Uh, and so now here you can remake the test map file. So I'm actually going to kill this program so it doesn't mess up the test map. Uh, because I don't want it to actually write a new test map. But you can do this and make yourself a new test map if you want. Um, what I would suggest is that what you do is you can rename this... Um, after you create the create the map, so that if you create a new map based on the pre-map, it won't overwrite. Because the program currently will just overwrite whatever uh, test map you put in. Okay, I think that's all I have uh, for you. I know this was an, a little bit of an extra bit at the end, but I always think of things right before I sign off, so there you go. All right. Uh, good luck on the project. Hopefully you can make some progress. Uh, try to experiment with this stuff, right? So by the time you submit your check-in, I want to see, you know, I want to see movement on the board, right? Movement on the board and maybe picking up items or going through doors. One feature, because remember, it's all about if you can get that far, then you can get to the end of the project. And if you haven't gotten that far by this Friday, then just remember, or this Sunday, or whenever you... I guess the, the check-ins do this Friday, but if you haven't gotten that far by this coming Sunday, the end of the, you know, uh, weekend, make sure that you get help on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Because you want to get from wherever you are to putting things on the board, to moving on the board, to getting items, to opening doors, to getting to the exit, right? And then secrets, of course. Um, Worry about secrets last. Just pretend they're doors if it if uh, if it hurts you at all, you know. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, with that, I will let all of you go. Have a nice rest of your hopefully day.
Of course, I'm recording this at like midnight, but that's just my, that's the normal life, isn't it? Of a coder. So, all right. Have a good day or night whenever you're watching this. Uh, that is all. Signing off.